All right, can we give them another round of applause? Wow. Wow, what a great job, kids. What a great job. You know, I'm, so if it's okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach a sermon about the musical that you just did. Because I have a great thought that came into my head as you guys were performing, as you guys were acting out. Do you remember the conversation that Sally has with Matilda, right? Do you remember the conversation they have? So Matilda says, hey, don't, isn't it amazing how much the wild makes you think about God? And what did Sally say? Does anybody remember? Yeah. What, what, what did she say? Oh, yeah, well, it's okay. You don't have to remember the name. Oh, well, Sally said... Yeah, how come everything Badger thinks about is always about God, right? And, and Matilda's like, well, don't you think about that? Don't you, doesn't, doesn't the wild make you think about God? And then what does Sally say? No, not really. Yeah, she said, well, no, not really. I've never, she said, I, I never really thought about it, right? Um, you know what's interesting um, is that I wonder, I mean, it makes, it makes you think, I wonder what makes some people look at the wild and say, Wow, how amazing is God? And some people look at the wild and say, I haven't really thought about it before. Well, you know, you know what? You know, who better yet that helps us think about God when we see the wild? That's the Holy Spirit. See, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God helps us. Uh, it helps us think about God. It helps us see God through the things that we see. Now, you might have a handout like this. If you don't, that's okay. Your parents do. And you can follow along with me. Because in that handout, it says, The Holy Spirit helps us worship God through the things He made. Did you know that? The Holy Spirit helps us worship God through the things that He made. We look at the things that God made, and we say, Wow, what a great God. Now, what we're going to talk about today is from a part of the Bible called Acts chapter 10. Okay, Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 10, is going to tell us about a guy named Cornelius. Okay, there's a man named Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, and he is a person kind of like Sally, who never really thought about it before, never really knew about God, no one's ever told him about God, so he actually, at one point, this guy lived 2,000 years ago, long time ago, he was a soldier in the most powerful army in the world. He was a soldier in the most powerful army in the world, and he was, better yet, he was a centurion. You know what a centurion is? It's kind of like a captain, okay? So he was kind of a big boss of a soldier. Now, when the generals in his army told him, okay, Cornelius, you have to move to a place called Israel because we just captured it, and you need to move there and keep them all in line, Okay? You move your people, you move your family, you move your regiment, you move your company over to Israel, and you're going to live there to make sure that they are obedient, okay? So Cornelius has to move to Israel because in a great war long ago, Israel lost and had the Roman Empire take over. And the Romans have soldiers all around the country that look at you. Like that. Like make sure that you are obedient. Now, what do you think that made the Israelites, what do you think that made the Jews in Israel feel? How do you think that made them feel? Go ahead. I can't say your name because you don't have a waiver. But yes, go ahead. Scared, scared maybe? I, yeah, you know, I would, I would be scared if I was them. What else? I mean, if you had soldiers that came and on every block just watched you everywhere, why would you feel? Go ahead. Worried. I would feel worried. I would too. Like, why are all these soldiers coming over here watching me? Right? So... He moves, but he moves with his family, okay? So they stay in this, you know, big fort and everything, and, and, uh, and he uh, takes over as a, in a place called Caesarea. It's a city inside Israel. Now, when he goes to Israel, though, he also learns about their God. So I don't know if you know anything about this, but the whole first half of the Bible talks about the God of the Jews, where this God saved the Jews out of slavery and then from that point on taught them who he was and how he made the world and how he loves his people. 
Now, see, for Cornelius, that is weird. Weird, 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 weird. Because Cornelius worships Greek gods. Okay? Now, Greek gods, they kind of made the world, but they didn't make all of it. And they made, like, little parts of the world were made by little gods. Okay? So gods would say, oh, this god made a mountain, and, and this god made, uh, made a waterfall, and this god made a river, and this god... He's never heard of one God making all things, all of it. He heard about it, and he said, wow, one God making all things? And he heard about God caring about the poor, the poor. See, in Cornelius' mind, see, what the Greek gods did was they, everybody who was poor, anybody who didn't have a whole lot of money or anybody who was hungry, it's because the gods didn't like them. It's because the gods were picking on them. And if you tried to help them, the God would be like, hey, what are you doing? Don't mess with me. So nobody helped the poor, where Cornelius is from. Nobody helped them. But then he heard that the, that the God of Israel, he cared about the poor, and he gave to the poor. He said, the blessed are the poor. They are the ones that I want to take care of. And so Cornelius, in Acts 10, verse 2, it actually says Cornelius changed. He actually started to pray to this God. He started to say, uh, Israel, God, um, well, uh, I, 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 hope, uh, I, hope, I hope we can talk soon. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to try to do what you say. I don't know a whole lot about you. Um, but guess what? You know, how is he supposed to hear? Anybody, how, would, how would Cornelius know more about God? How would he have to know more? What are some ways he could know more? Yes. He could read the Bible. He could read the Bible. You know what's weird? That's a great idea. Now, at this point in Cornelius' life, only half the Bible has been written. And it's all in Aramaic, which is a language he doesn't speak very well. Um, well, it's, a, it's all in Hebrew, which is a language he doesn't speak very well. And all the people that can help him understand it all speak Aramaic. And all the people that can help him understand it don't like him. They're afraid of him. Do you remember what we said? What does it feel like when soldiers watch over you? You feel worried. You feel scared. So all the people that could help him know more about God didn't talk to him. Because they were afraid of him. And, guess that, get this, get this. So, the Jews had only certain foods they were allowed to eat, okay? Only certain foods they were, they were allowed to eat. And the foods that, that other people ate, like Cornelius, like bacon, I know. I know. Cornelius is allowed to eat bacon. The Jews were not allowed to eat bacon. And on top of that, the Jews were not even allowed to eat with someone who was eating bacon. So, you're probably thinking, how do you get, how, how many times, if you have, when you make friends, how many times have you eaten with them? Like at lunch, at school, or maybe you went over to their house and you ate with them? How many, anybody eaten with a friend before? Can you imagine what it would be like if you weren't allowed to eat at their house? Or if you weren't even allowed to eat around them? How would you be friends? You'd be like, we could play at the playground. Yet yeah, it's true. There's only so many playgrounds to go around, okay? Right? So there weren't, there weren't a whole lot of ways for him to hear about the Bible because everyone who was supposed to tell him about the Bible couldn't be around him. That's a problem. Isn't that a problem? And, and on top of that, the greatest man who ever lived ended up teaching in the country he was in, in Israel, while he was living there, and he'd never met him. The greatest teacher who ever lived came to Cornelius' country in Israel, and Cornelius never got to know him. He heard about him, kind of but didn't know him. And then when that greatest teacher died on the cross <laughs> in Jerusalem, 50 miles from here, Jesus died on the cross while Cornelius was in Caesarea, 50 miles away. And he was praying to that God, praying to him, saying, please help me know more about you. And the God he was praying to was dying for him at the same time. And he didn't even know. You know, kids, there's a lot of people at your school. There's a lot of people in your neighborhood. There may be even people in your family. They might pray, but they don't know God yet. And they don't know Jesus. And if we don't tell them, how will they know? How will they know? Jesus died in the same country he was in, and he didn't even know. Because no one would tell him. Now, the story isn't over, okay? Don't cry yet. Right? Story isn't over. You can cry later. Right? Um, see, what happens is Cornelius, as he's praying, he's, he's giving to the poor. He, he prays to God at one point, and, he's, and, and while he's praying, an angel shows up. Right, Jax? 
right? Yeah. And an angel shows up and says, hello. Okay, when an angel shows up and says, hello, you, you listen. You listen. All right? And, it, and it, said, it said, there's this word clearly in there. It says, and clearly showed up. So he wasn't making it up. Okay? An angel showed up and said, hello. And said, Cornelius, there's a guy in a place called Joppa. A city about 30 miles from you. A place called Joppa. You have to go and find this man, and you have to tell him to tell you about me. About God. Okay? Right? End scene. You know, so the, the angel told him, you have to go find this guy named, how many of you know, what, what, how many of you know what, who it was? How, can you guess? Wait, what did you say, Trinity? What did you say? Peter! That's who it was! Hey, yeah, because remember, you just learned about a bunch of, remember, you learned it in, in VBS day one, remember, day one was, uh, was, was Jesus in the temple, and then day two was Jesus on the, um, Jesus was in, oh, uh, he was on the river, he got baptized, right, and then day three was Jesus um, on water, remember, he walked on water, remember who walked on water with him? Peter did. That was, yeah, 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 that was Peter, so that's a, that's a perfect person to ask about God, wouldn't you think? That's true, but that's a different Peter. Peter has come a long way since then. Okay? He's come a long way. I get it, Trinity. He, was, he didn't do so well. He didn't do so hot in the first few pages. But actually, since then, the Spirit of God has come on Peter. And he's been teaching people about God. And so he tells him to go to a place called Joppa. Okay? To go find Peter. And so he don't even know, he don't know Peter from Adam. That's kind of a pun. Anyway, uh, he, he don't know Peter from anybody. Okay? And... And he, said, and he gets out of his dream and he says, okay, oh, goodness, we got to go. Okay, hey, Billy. And he has this soldier who's apparently named Billy. And, uh, and he says, you need to go to Joppa. And you need to find this guy named Simon Peter. Okay? And Billy's like, okay. Uh, and he goes up. And I don't know why he walks like an emperor penguin. but Because you guys did penguins. It's your fault. All right. So he walks out um, to go to Joppa. Okay? Now, meanwhile, 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 it takes like at least a day to get to Joppa. Okay? So while that happens, Peter, Peter, you know, at this point, Peter has, has started this huge church in Jerusalem, the first church ever. Right? We're in a church right now. He started the first church ever. Okay? He started the first church ever, and he went about in the countryside healing and teaching about Jesus. Well, while he was doing that, somebody's like, hey, Peter, there's a really awesome girl named Tabitha. She's so great. She loves God. She just died. And we're so sad. We know that Jesus at one point brought people back to life. Can you do that? And Peter's like, where is she? Where do you think she lived? Where, do you, where, 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 guess. Where, guess, 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 guess. Some of you are asleep. Come on, where do you think this lady, Tabitha, lives? At her house. At her house. <laughs> Nothing gets past you. Yes. You close. It starts with a G. Come on, I've been saying. Joppa. She lives in Joppa. Wow, Joppa's a cool place. All right, so Peter goes to Joppa. And he goes and he heals this woman named Tabitha. She's dead, dead, dead as a doorknob up on the second floor. I don't know why that mattered, but she was on the second floor. All right, he goes up there, raises her from the dead, and then people in Joppa are like, this is amazing. You got to stay and teach about this God more often. So, so Peter stayed. Stayed in this house, and as he is in the house, he is praying, and, and he hears a voice praying. He has this vision of a bunch of bacon. Some of you have had dreams like this. I know you have. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I have. Well, probably last night, but yeah. Um, it's not that kind of bacon dream, okay? So he has a dream of bacon. Well, can Jews eat bacon? No, they can't. Jax is like, oh, wow, this is a terrible story. No, he's not. No, that's an unclean animal. They were not allowed to eat that. So, so he saw a vision of bacon, and, a, and, and God tell him, rise, Peter, and eat it. And, and Peter is like, oh, I am not allowed to eat bacon. <laughs> well, guys, when God tells you something is clean, is it clean? Yeah. Does God joke around like that? No, he doesn't joke around. And so God's like, uh, don't call unclean. Don't call gross what I have made clean. And some of y'all going, amen. Amen. I like this dream of clean bacon. Um, 
well, why is that happening? And Peter thought it was weird. He's like, oh, okay. He comes out of his dream, and all of a sudden, here's a knock on the door. And, 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 the, and the guy who lives there is like, Peter, there's a guy who came to, to come see you. And he's like, who? And he's like, I don't know, but he walks like a penguin. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. And, and so Peter's like, really? What's his name? His name is Billy. <gasps> who is Billy? Billy's Cornelius' friend, right? Yeah. And so, and so he comes, meets Billy. Billy's like, uh, so you're supposed to come to um, <clears throat> uh, my master's house. And Peter's like, really? Why? Let me read my note. Um, because you're supposed to tell him about God. So let's go. So he follows, he follows um, Billy home to go see Cornelius, okay? Corn he goes to Cornelius, and guess what? Cornelius is waiting for him with his entire family there, okay? His entire family is there, and they just, they all set out. Cornelius' family is like, please, come and tell us about God. And this is how much Cornelius knew about God. This is how much he knew about God. As soon as Peter shows up, Cornelius goes, oh, great and mighty God. Thank you for coming to my house. Guys, is that who just showed up at their house? No, no that's not who just, who just showed up at his house. Who just showed up at his house? Peter. Peter. Is Peter God? No. no. So what do you think Peter said? Uh, yes, yes, I, I think so. Yeah, Peter said, uh, well, <laughs> I can see why you called me. I can see why you called me. You have no idea what you're doing. I am just a man. I'm just a man, Cornelius. Come over. Just get up, man. Get up, get up, get up. And so he says this. Now, in, in the book of Acts, chapter 10, it tells us what Peter said to him. I've got it up on the screen behind me, but Acts 10, verse 34, says this. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to do. You just sang a song that is very similar to what he said, and you need to tell me what song it reminds you of. Okay? So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, oh, by the way, he's Lord of all, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. And Cornelius is like, oh, I think I did hear about that guy who was killed. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who have been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Okay, there's a lot of words here. But there's a song that you sang that reminds me a lot of what he said, okay? Anybody idea? Oh, that's, I didn't even think of that. That's actually really good too. Yeah, because what's he saying? He's saying, there's a God who's worthy of all praise. His name is Jesus. He died for you, right? I was thinking of the song that goes, Ah, oh, believe, you're right. See, because the first thing he said, I mean, I was thinking about that when you guys were singing up here and you were like, Jesus is the Messiah. Remember, th that's what he's saying. I was picturing you guys talking to Cornelius. I was like, oh, this would be so cool if you showed up at Cornelius' his doorstep and said, here, I got a song for you and stop worshiping me, by the way. Right? This is so cool that he gets to tell people about Jesus. Now, remember, guys, remember, We've talked, I mean, the theme of VBS was what? Encounters with, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Encounters with Jesus. Now, everybody who you read about who encountered Jesus, they encountered Jesus right in front of them, right? So Peter uses this word um, witness, okay? He says, this is who Jesus is. And then he says, and we are witnesses. So a witness here, take that off, uh, Miss Mary, please, and then I'm going to see if they remember it. Um, but, like, guys, what is a witness? Yes, Kareem? 
It's when you see something. You're right. It's when you see something for yourself. Anybody else have an idea? Go ahead. Okay. So, um, and the, the plot thickens. And, and, you, and um, the witness is the person like, who died, and you check the, um, check the house, see if there's anything that might have started to fire. Okay, so you're almost right. So it's like if there's a fire and they're trying to find out who started the fire, the, the witness is someone who saw who started the fire. Okay? So like a wit, basically a witness is someone who sees something for themselves. Okay, so like if, if someone were to say, hey, did Apollo Baptist Church, does Apollo Baptist Church have VBS? What would you say? Yes. How do you know? Because we were there. Because we were there. That's how. Yes, you are witnesses of Apollo Baptist Church VBS. Now, were you there when Jesus was alive? How can you claim to be saved by him? I'll tell you how, because the story's like this, because Cornelius never met Jesus, and then this happened. Peter shares about Jesus. He says, look, this is the Jesus who, sir, who is a holy God, okay? There is a holy God who made the world. And Cornelius is like, what? And you have sin in your heart. You have sin and you have not been holy and you cannot be close to God as a sinful person. But Jesus died and came back to life to prove that he's beaten death. And he has called us, like, like Peter, like he's called us to be what? to be witnesses of all that he did. Now, that leads me to this point here. It says, uh, number two, the Holy Spirit helps us encounter Jesus even though we've never seen him. Because if you keep reading, verse 44 says, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles, even on a Roman guy. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, can anyone withhold water from baptizing these people? We who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. I need to wrap up what I'm doing. But the point that I want to make to you guys, you know when Sally, you know when they're at the fireplace and, and, and Sally, what did she read? Do you remember what she said? What did she say? Go ahead. Oh, you don't have to remember the whole thing, but just exactly what did she say? She went from saying, I don't really think about God, and then what did she say? But now I see God. Do you know what, what, what that is? How, what changed? What changed from her seeing the world and saying, mm, not a whole lot special about it, and then saying, God made this, and he, and he cares about me, and i got to worship him. What changed? Yes, belief, her belief changed. Now, how did that belief change? Because the earth didn't change. The earth was there the whole time. What changed was, go ahead, see if you can get. Badger. Okay, Badger was there. Yes, but the spirit of God is what changed her heart. And so if you're sitting here thinking, wow, I love God. I love what he's made. That's the spirit of God in you. There's three things that the Holy Spirit does for us. And if you want to write it down, you can. There's this. One, turning from our sin, okay? The Holy Spirit helps, helps us turn from our sin. We'll go, I don't want to live life my way. I want to live my life for God. I don't want to do life the way I did it. My life now belongs to Jesus. Also, the Holy Spirit helps us worship God in all we do, right? So when we, we not, not just when we go on nature hikes, but when we go to school or when we obey our parents. Sometimes we obey our parents because... We're afraid that if we don't, we're going to go time out or something worse. But God, the Holy Spirit helps us do it just because we love God. Number three, it helps us, or he helps us tell people about Jesus. Right? Because right away, as Peter was talking, the Spirit of God comes down on everybody there who believes. Now, how did Peter know what to say to them? Peter knew how to, what, did anybody have a guess? How did Peter know what to say? Yes. Because the Spirit of God is in him. I think you're very correct. 
The Spirit of God was in him. So the last point I have for you, number three, the Holy Spirit makes us a witness, a witness, right, to help others encounter Jesus too, right? It's not enough that you and I know about Jesus. We have to go tell others about Jesus. Now, the great thing about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, he makes us, it, it's, it's, like, it's like everything you read in the Bible happened to you which it does, right? The Spirit of God makes you read stuff about Jesus and go, wow, this is what Jesus has done for me. How could that even be possible? That was 2,000 years ago. You didn't know Cornelius. You didn't know Peter. But you read it and you go, this is who God is. That's the Spirit of God in your heart. And if there are any adults in this room that are like, I've never given any glory to God with my life, you need the Spirit of God. And if you pray and ask Jesus in your heart, the Spirit of God is going to come on you and he will change your life from here on out. And if you're wondering, how do I do that? There's, time, there's a time I'm going to have right now where you can come forward, get, get prayer if you want to. Like, I just need prayer. I, I, I'm thinking I might need to... I don't think I've ever given any glory to God before. I don't think I've ever really known him. I've prayed before, but I feel like Cornelius... I feel like something's missing, and I need to know what it is. Maybe it's you've never accepted Jesus before. Maybe it's just you've been living in sin for a long time. You've known him, and you've rejected him for a long time. Maybe it's something else. But me and some of the pastors and our wives will be up here, and we can talk to you and pray with you. Or if you're just like, oh, I just love God, and I want to love him more, and I know I haven't, you can come forward, and you can pray right here at the altar, just you and God, and just respond to him. But this is a time where we're going to continue to worship through response. So I'm going to pray for us, okay? I'm going to pray. And then after I pray, we're going to have uh, the, the, the praise team is going to sing another song. And uh, me and, and Pastor Jim and, and Reginald and, and, and our wives will be up here uh, for the most part to just pray with anybody who needs prayer. Does that make sense? Can we do that? All right. Dear Jesus, thank you for sending your son to die for us. Thank you for sending us as witnesses of everything you've done. Thank you for dying for us and, and for having a plan for our lives. God, I pray that everyone here, kids and adults included, if we've never really thought about how great you are through the things that you've made, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit on us to make us turn from our sin, make us worship you, and make us tell people about Jesus. God, please help us. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen.